Yeah, hi there. This is Michael, the founder, owner, and the materials writer of the Seven Step System to Pass the TOEFL IBT. And uh, I want to orient you to the grammar lesson number seven. So sometimes a few students will have problems trying to get access to this particular website. And uh, let me explain the rationale for studying the, the exercises at this particular website. So you are taking the TOEFL exam and you want to do really well on the speaking and the writing parts of the test, right? We all know that. Now we all know that you will be graded in part, at least part of your score will be based on your grammar and, and your vocabulary usage. So you want to make sure you can minimize, I think, as many errors as possible or eliminate as many errors as possible in either your speaking or your writing. And that's going to be very good for you for the TOEFL, but also it'll be much better for you uh, if you do have to study in a university and get a graduate degree or some type of a professional degree, or you simply want to speak more accurately to those people uh, that are listening to you or you want to improve your writing, uh, this website is going to be very good. Now, I was going to create all of these lessons at my website. You'll notice that the grammar part of my course is one of the, what I call the skimpiest, the it's one of the smallest parts of my course in terms of lessons. And a lot of students think, well, there's only seven lessons, but, you know, how many lessons are there really? There's actually thousands of exercises in grammar lesson number seven. So I'm not trying to panic you, but I'm just saying that there's a lot of inf information here and there is no need for me to do any other lessons after grammar lesson number seven because that one lesson and going to this website here a writer's reference by Diana Hacker by doing ex by completing the exercises at her website that is going to make a very big impact on your academic English proficiency there's no doubt about it alright so let's see how it works first of all I'm gonna say this twice you do not need to log in when you go to this website. You do not need to log in when you go to this website. So I simply go directly to the writing area. You do not need to log in when you go to this website. So I'm going to put cancel. And there you go. And here we are. Now let me show you how it works. Now I'm going to tell you what's going to be most important for you to help you make the improvements that you want to make. Now I think like the vocabulary section of my online TOEFL course, uh, you want to make grammar, I think, a regular routine of, of study each week. In fact, I recommend the first month that the Use My Course focus in the vocabulary, pronunciation, and the grammar sections only. So each week when you have your calendar, you, just, you go to your calendar, you see Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Each day you'll put vocabulary, the next day you'll put grammar, the next day you'll put pronunciation. Then you'll just repeat that again. Vocabulary, pronunciation, grammar. That's six days. And then for the seventh day, I would probably recommend you to, to make that second day each week vocabulary. Actually, that'll be the third the third day of that week that you study vocabulary. So again, each week, I think for the first month, will be like this. At my website, you'll study uh, each day vocabulary, pronunciation, grammar, vocabulary, pronunciation, grammar, and then vocabulary. That's week one. You do that for four weeks. Now, each day you're working in the grammar areas, the first thing is work on the writing exercises. The purpose and audience, I think, is very important. This is going to be very good. It, it's showing you how you can adjust your language based on your purpose and your tone. Complete all of these lessons, purpose and audience. Secondly, thesis statements, very good stuff here. Now, they're talking about two to five page college papers, right? But, you know, you're working on the independent and integrated writing tasks, and this will still give you some good ideas 
on how you can organize your writing with a specific thesis. But remember that different writing does require different types of thesis statements. Introductions. This is also good. Conducting a peer review. Forget it. You don't really need to worry about that. Choosing an appropriate point of view. Yes. This is very good. Do you want to write or speak from the I or from the you or from the he or she point of view or the we or the they? I mean, this is a very good question. I see a lot of mistakes when my students are completing the TOEFL speaking task and the writing task. They don't know what point of view they want to use. So complete this lesson. It, and, 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 and at this website, there's complete full explanations for all the answers to all the exercises. Topic sentences, yes. This is very, very important, especially to get you to kind of understand the concept of creating arguable topic sentences, I think, that, that help kind of that re restate the key arguments you're making in your thesis. And this is very important, I think, with the independent writing task and also transitions. So you, you also want to work on that. So in the writing areas, you want to focus on purpose and audience, thesis statements, introductions, choosing appropriate point of view, topic sentences, and transitions. This is going to be very important. Now remember, the race, it's not to the fastest in the beginning, but to the consistent TOEFL student. So I'm giving you a lot of things that you want to work on right now. Now I'm going to grammar areas. Remember, pace yourself. You're going to be studying grammar probably two or three days for each week for your first month. If you spend maybe two or three hours in each of those days, then that will give you plenty of time, I think, to go over all of the exercises at this particular website. Now, the next thing you want to do is focus in the grammar uh, exercises and start with sentence style. You have to get control of your sentence structure before you can do anything. This is very important. So this is a, an under sentence style. You want to focus on everything. Parallelism, edit and compare, needed words, needed words again, edit and compare. Misplaced modifiers, misplaced modifiers, edit and compare. Dangling modifiers, dangling modifiers, edit and compare. Shifts, person and number, shifts and tense, shifts, shifts, edit and compare. Mixed constructions, mixed constructions, edit and compare, choppy sentences, choppy sentences, edit and compare, and subordination. Do everything. Several times, I'm telling you, this is good stuff. Even, I recommend, keep a, a grammar journal as you're completing these exercises. I recommend that you write down the correct forms of the exercises that you see so you get used to them especially the problems that you miss because you'll be you'll be doing quizzes and things and it'll tell you if your answer is right or wrong if it's wrong you should take some notes in your grammar journal then you can study those later on and you're more likely to remember what your mistakes are now the next thing word choice everybody has problems with word choice so this is very good for you uh, to study now, I would say the most important things here for you, for right now, based on your level, based on what you want to do, wordy sentences, wordy sentences, edit and compare, wordy sentences, edit and compare, active versus passive verbs, active versus be verbs, active verbs, edit and compare, uh, jargon, don't worry about it, uh, sexist language, uh, yeah. I would say do that one. Mist, misuse words, study that. Standard idioms, yes, study that. Uh, cliches and mixed metaphors, uh, probably not. You're probably not making mistakes in this area at this point. That's more of a native speaker type error. Okay, the next thing. Grammatical sentences. Study everything. This is all about minimizing your grammar mistakes. Subject verb agreement, subject verb agreement again, subject verb agreement a third time, irregular verbs, standard English verb forms, verb tense and mood, pronoun antecedent agreement, 
pronoun antecedent agreement again, pronoun antecedent agreement, edit and compare, pronoun reference, pronoun reference again, pronoun reference, edit and compare, pronoun case such as I versus me, pronoun case again such as I versus me, who versus whom, pronoun case review, adjective and adverbs, adjective and adverbs again, sentence fragments, sentence fragments, edit and compare, sentence fragments, edit and compare again, run-on sentences, run-on sentences, edit and compare, run-on sentences again, edit and compare. You want to study all of these things. Again, keep a grammar journal, especially when you're making mistakes. Write down the correct forms of those sentences in your journal and then you can review those and you'll probably begin to minimize a lot of your mistakes. ESL challenges. Yes, you want to study everything here several times. Verb forms and tenses, verb forms with modals, conditional sentences, verbs followed by gerunds or infinitives, omissions and repetitions, sentence structure, articles, articles and types of nouns, And we have present versus past participles, order of cumulative adjectives, prepositions showing time and place. Again, in your grammar journal, when you're making mistakes here, really pay attention and write down uh, those uh, the correct versions of those ones you had trouble with in your journal. Punctuation, God help us all. I'll be honest with you, everybody's going to hell when it comes to punctuation. Native speakers, non-native speakers alike, doesn't matter who you are, you're probably going to hell because you don't understand this. Now, I'm just joking with you when I'm saying going to hell. You know what I mean. I'm just saying that we're all in the same boat. Everybody has major problems with punctuation, but you can solve them. You can really, really solve these problems through going through these particular uh, web pages. Now remember that earlier in my online TOEFL course, I have about five or six really powerful videos that will help you understand how to use punctuation in writing. Make sure you watch those videos a few times and then once you've done that, you are ready to complete these exercises. Major uses of the comma, major uses of the comma again, all uses of the comma, misuses of the comma, the semicolon and the comma, it's a comparison. The semicolon and the comma, again, a comparison. How about this one? The colon, the semicolon, and the comma, it te it's testing your knowledge of the three, the apostrophe, question marks, and other punctuation marks. Again, like I said before, every time you make a mistake, put the correct versions of those sentences in your grammar journal. Mechanics. This is also pretty important. The hyphen, capital letters, abbreviations, numbers, and italics, and underlining. Study them all. This is very, very important for you. And last but not least is basic grammar. So parts of speech nouns, parts of speech pronouns, parts of speech verbs, parts of speech verbs again, parts of speech adjectives, parts of speech adverbs, all parts of speech, subjects, subjects again, subjects, subject complements and direct objects, indirect objects and direct complements, linking transitive and intransitive verbs, prepositional phrases, prepositional phrases again, objects of prepositions, verbal phrases, verbal phrases again, subordinate clauses, subordinate clauses again, subjects of subordinate clauses, phrases and clauses, and sentence types. And there it is. You see what I'm talking about? Lesson number seven, it doesn't look like much at my website because it is simply a link. But once you get to this website, it is literally thousands of exercises all designed to improve your speaking and your writing proficiency of academic English, right? So 
I can now probably uh, recommend, I think for you guys from an online TOEFL course, the writing and grammar areas are the most important. Now obviously, if you're going to graduate school or undergraduate school and you know you're going to be writing research papers and things, you can also study the research exercises, the research in general, the MLA APA Chicago. You can take a look at that. You can also go down to model papers. This is actually pretty good stuff too. And don't be an idiot. Don't try to copy any of these papers and pass them off as your own paper in the university. Your professors will know immediately what you're doing. So obviously don't do that. But these papers are very, very effective. For example, MLA papers, MLA argument papers, MLA analysis papers, MLA literature papers, papers in progress, an MLA sample outline, APA papers, and so on. There's a lot of good examples of how to write the research paper that's also at this website. Okay? So in conclusion to this video, the whole purpose of this video was to simply explain to you, one of my online TOEFL course students, how to use my TOEFL grammar lesson number seven. And remember, if they ask you, you do not need to type in any login information at all. Remember that? I told you that a couple of times, right? So uh, anyway, uh, I hope that this video kind of gives you some good ideas. And, and I promise you, uh, as you go through my online TOEFL course, as you complete these exercises, either the vocabulary ones or the pronunciation or the grammar areas of my course, this is going to give you the, the backbone, the foundation that you need. These three areas are very, very important. Vocabulary, pronunciation, and grammar. These three things will help you. If you have a good background in these three areas, you will do very well on the reading, listening, and the speaking and the writing parts of the test, right? That's the whole purpose. See, that's why a lot of other websites that, that specialize in teaching TOEFL, um, you know, I call my, my, my website is called the seven step system to pass the TOEFL IBT, of course, because I focus on vocabulary, pronunciation, grammar, and then listening, reading and writing and speaking. And that's seven steps, right? And these first three steps are very, very important. So truly, you really need to spend serious time in these three areas. Solve as many vocabulary, pronunciation, and grammar problems as you can. The more problems you solve, the better you will do when you take the TOEFL test. I promise you that. All right? Anyway, have a great day, and all the best to your high-scoring TOEFL success.